So uh, good afternoon to all and welcome to the second lecture of computer vision. Uh, so today we'll start uh, the actual syllabus and uh, this is the first chapter uh, introduction of computer vision. Uh, as I told you yesterday that uh, in this chapter we are going to study uh, first uh, human vision system uh, then we'll study the different vision systems of like as animals or insects or birds okay just for understanding purpose and then we'll see uh, computer vision system will after that we'll uh, do the comparison of human vision system versus computer vision system and at the end we'll see uh, how uh, high level computer vision system is achieved and then what is the difference between uh, machine vision and computer vision so that is what we will study in this chapter okay uh, as you know uh, that uh, vision in humans and machine okay we are basically trying to mimic the machine like as a human being okay so you know that in the human okay uh, this is the electromagnetic spectrum okay and uh, uh, the visible uh, spectrum of light is from 400 to nan uh, 700 nanometer so from 400 to 700 nanometer uh, this is the visible spectrum and uh, in this wavelength so wavelength of this one is 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer and uh, okay so in this wavelength we can see the object and so on uh, below that you have this ultraviolet radiation or you have this x-ray radiation or gamma radiation or cosmic radiation above that one so this is the range basically of visible spectrum above that one infrared radiations are there or then medium wave ultra high frequency and uh, this uh, radio waves are there microwaves are there and then alternating current and so on so basically as okay if you go from left to right okay its wavelength is increasing okay and if you go from right to left its uh, basically frequency is uh, increasing right so basically wavelength and frequency are uh, um, uh, inversely proportional to each other okay and uh, so for the human being the visible spectrum is in between 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer okay uh, so uh, below that one as i said this is the ultraviolet rays are there or x rays are there so uh, and then gamma rays are there so wavelength of that one is less and then uh, above that above this visible spectrum uh, okay wavelength uh, is of infrared rays then radar is there and then these are the wavelengths which are used for television and radio uh, broadcasting and then ic circuits and so on so here frequency is less as you go from right to left frequency goes on increasing and if you go from left to right wavelength goes on increasing so this is the wavelength where you can see the objects or basically human being can see the objects with these wavelengths and so on so this range of uh, electromagnetic spectrum is from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer okay now if you look at the cross section of the human eye okay you will find there are several uh, uh, basically sections like as uh, you have this pupil is there and then uh, iris is there cornea is there and then also be okay behind this iris there is a lens and this is the portion of your retina so this is the basically portion of retina retina consists of different types of okay retina consists of uh, blood vessels and uh, so on and then finally this is the optic nerve okay and in this inside this retina there is a vitreous humor uh, okay upper half has been uh, okay removed here and then uh, these are nothing but the layers of retina and so on okay and this is also a part of sclera okay so this is the part of sclera and these are the blood vessels which are connected to the brain all right 
Now, uh, you see that, uh, I mean, basically light from the source will uh, be entering. Uh, okay, light from the source will basically fall on the object and then object will reflect that light back. And then this reflected light will enter through the uh, pupil. So uh, where actually in our in our eye, in our eye, okay, light enters through the pupil and then it passes through the lens and then it will fall on the retina and then image will form on the retina. Okay, so uh, here, uh, basically the role of uh, pupil is to pass the light, okay, and uh, uh, role of iris is to basically either contract your, um, uh, uh, this one, pupil or expand your pupil. So you might have seen that uh, when you see uh, in the dark room, you have to expand your eyes or means there is nothing but uh, you are expanding your pupil and this can be done by using iris okay and when you are basically uh, looking at any object in very uh, uh, okay high uh, lights and uh, so on so uh, in that basically you contract your pupil and uh, so expansion and contraction of pupil can be done by using iris okay whereas you know the role of lens so the role of lens is see lens is just behind this iris okay low uh, this lens is just behind the iris and for the normal person okay when this uh, when this basically uh, okay lens is working properly so the role of lens is to form the image on the retina at correct place right so this is the role of uh, basically lens and uh, if it is not working, so sometimes it may happen that uh, image is from before retina or image is from after retina. So if that is the problem uh, occurring in the lens, then you know that you have to use the external uh, spect or basically classes which will adjust the uh, basically image or um, uh, focal length of that one. And then, uh, so it is basically to correct your image, uh, this one uh, formation of the image on the retina. Okay. And you know that this whole retina consists of rods and cones. Okay. Now we'll see the main, uh, the major difference of rods and cones. And also we'll see what are the functions of every, uh, this one. So cornea, um, okay, cornea. So this cornea part, Okay, what is the role of this cornea? Cornea is the transparent outer covering of the eye and that admits the light. So this cornea basically admits the light. And so as I told you that light will pass through the pupil only. What is the diameter of the pupil? Di okay, you know that pupil is a very black um, uh, inner circle and its diameter is very, very less like as a two mm or uh, uh, three mm around that one only. And so it will, allow uh, okay allow to pass this light uh, coming from the external sources which is reflected from the objects and then cornea uh, this one cornea uh, is a transparent outer covering of the eye that admits the light and then pupil is the as i told you that it is a small uh, black circle uh, which is nothing but the adjustable opening in the iris uh, that regulates the amount of light that enters in the eye. So it will basically uh, regulate the amount of light entering. Okay, and uh, this iris, which is just outside, uh, okay, you know that uh, small black dot is nothing but the pupil, and outside that you will find the circular area. Sometimes that is brown, sometimes it is black, uh, green, blue, or like that. So uh, this is the pigmented ring of muscles. Uh, situated behind the cornea and uh, as i told you that uh, the role of this iris is to control the light uh, okay uh, and this uh, control the light entering through the pupil so that is the role of iris and uh, you know that at the end of uh, this one uh, this whole retina consists of rods and cones okay so what is the role of rod what is the role of cones how many cones are there and so on so uh, here the retina is the uh, 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 neural tissue and photoreceptive cell located 
on the inner surface of posterior portion of the eye okay so at the back side of the eye so this portion is called as the retina and uh, this retina is nothing but basically photoreceptive cells so which will convert uh, basically your light into the electrical signal you know that photo uh, the role of uh, photoreceptive cells so it will just convert that one and then this signal will be communicated to the brain right now so this is the neural tissue and photoreceptive cell which is located on the inner surface of the posterior portion of the eye and this consists of rods and cones now where basically rods are present where basically cones are present okay and what is the role of rods and what is the role of uh, cones okay so and how many number of rods are there how many number of cones are there in your eye uh, this one retina or like that see so basically the whole area okay uh, is a, a retina and this retina consists of rods and cones okay so these are nothing but the photoreceptive cells and uh, this uh, rods are basically sensitive for uh, dim light and cones are sensitive for a uh, bright light and so on and uh, okay uh, uh you'll find that these rods are not present in the foyer region okay what is that foyer region i will show that one in our next uh, slide so we have a cross section of uh, this retina and then you will find that in retina there are the uh, regions like as uh, the foyer region is there optic disc region is there and then uh, the other part of this retina is there so uh, rods are not present in the foyer region whereas cones are mainly concentrated in the foyer region uh, cones are uh, mainly responsible for chromatic signal whereas rods are responsible for a chromatic signal means if you want a color information so this color information you'll get it from the cones so there are three types of cone one is a red cone another one is blue cone and, and third one is a uh, green cone so number of cones see that here uh, basically as i told you that uh, this retina consists of rods and cones and ro rods are the photo uh, receptor cell of the retina this is sensitive to the low light of low intensity okay so keep in mind uh, and try to understand rods are responsible to sense the uh, light of low intensity whereas see uh, rods are also photoreceptor cells cones are also photoreceptor cells so this is responsible for sensing the light of low intensity whereas uh, this one uh, cones are responsible for maximally sensitive to one of the three different wavelengths of light and hence encodes the color region so particularly for uh, these cones are responsible for getting the uh, color information as i told you that there are three types of cones one is a red cone another one is green cone and third one is blue cone okay and uh, uh, another part of see we'll see in detail about the rods and cones but before that one so another part of the eyes is lens as i told you that the role of lens is to form the image on the retina exactly but sometimes if there is a problem in your uh, natural lens of your eyes then you have to use the external lens which will basically see sometimes it may happen that you have problem of uh, short vision or uh, distant vision and so on means according to that one you have to use the lenses and then that will uh, basically adjust the focal length and uh, image will form on exactly on the retina so it consists of series of transparent onion like layers this lens and uh, its shape can be changed by contraction of uh, ciliary muscles okay and then accommodation so changes in the thickness of lens okay accomplished by the ciliary muscles that focuses image of the near or distant object on the retina so the main purpose of lens is to focus the image on the retina okay and uh, this is done by ciliary muscles of the uh, this one then Fueva is the region of uh, uh, retina. Now, this Fueva region uh, is the area of retina that mediates the most acute vision. 
so uh, it contains only the color sensitive cones so it does not contain the rods it contains only the photoreceptive cells uh, like as a cones so rgb cones are there and uh, another part of this retina is the optic disc okay so optic disc is the location on the retina where fibers of ganglion cell exist uh, in the eye and these are responsible for the blind spot okay now see that uh, the distribution of cones and rods uh, in the human retina okay so let me let me show you first uh, uh, this one uh, okay so uh, this is again uh, the entire retina okay and um, okay uh, i think just one uh, whether that retina image is there uh, or let me check it once just one minute uh, give me one minute <clears throat> I'll show you the retinal image and then I'll show you the part of uh, this one Koyava uh, region and then part of optic disc and so on just one minute. Huh? Okay, so is it visible now? Okay, fine, no problem. So just I'll, I'll explain uh, this one. Um, uh, see, this is the uh, image of complete image of retina, which is obtained with the fundus camera. So this is the fundus camera. Uh, we cannot obtain this retinal image with the help of normal camera. You need a fundus camera for uh, this one. So there are various fundus cameras available. Uh, and uh, uh, with this TRC, Topcon TRC 300, we have obtained this um, uh, color fundus photography of retina. and. Uh, uh, See, as I told you that this retina consists of your region. So this is the uh, for your region and this is the optic disc. Okay. So, uh, okay. And all those are the nerve fibers and these are the vessels basically. Uh, okay. And this retina consists of rods and cones. So only thing is that in the region of Fueva, okay, the, in this region, for your region, only uh, color, um, uh, this one, cones are available, no rods are available. So on the other part of this retina, 
rods are available but in this whoever region only color uh, um, uh, this one uh, cones are available okay and this is the optic disc basically and this uh, okay so um, uh, this is connected to the optic nerve and then optic nerve is connected to the brain and then signal will be transmitted see image will form on the retina so this image uh, okay whatever is this optical signal is there that will be converted into electrical signal and then it will be communicated uh, to the brain electrical signal will be connected to the brain through this optic nerve and so on and uh, you know that for normal uh, person basically okay uh, the role of see well, for normal person all those blood vessels are uh, okay uh, will be working fine and there will not be any leakage and so on but for the people those who are suffering with diabetic retinopathy or like that these blood vessels become weak and they start leaking the blood or other lipid profile on this uh, retina and then it get deposited on the retina and then retina get damaged so for this is the basically uh, retina of normal person okay uh, you will see the retina see this these are the layers of this uh, uh, retina which okay you can obtain the layer by layer information of the retina with the help of uh, oct imaging simple fundus camera will not obtain the layer by layer information it will obtain only through two dimensional image uh, of the retina but if you want to see uh, if there is a swelling in the retina or like that you have to use the oct imaging in that case the simple fundus camera will not work and then how does it look like of this one see that this is the uh, um, oct imaging of retina so there are several layers uh, uh, and then you can check whether if there is any um, uh, like for example is if there is any swelling of the retina or like that so what i mean to say here is that there are so this is the foyava part which is very very um, important for color vision and then rest of the part there okay it will there will be rods and cones but here mainly cones are available and this is the optic disc uh, so uh, and then image is formed on the retina okay so that is what i wanted to uh, say you from this image now we'll come back to our original presentation and uh, uh, I'll just let me share my uh, earlier presentation. Okay, so uh, this human vision system, okay. Uh, in this vision, uh, human vision system, as I told you that um, this retina consists of uh, rods and cones. So there are, uh, uh, see, in the cones, uh, how many rods and cones are there in the retina? So 120 million rods are there, whereas only 6 million cones are there in the re human retina. Okay. So 6 million cones are there. So cones are responsible for color vision and rods are responsible for dim light vision and so on. And then these 6 million cones, uh, out of that one, as I told you that there are three types of cone. One is red cone and another one is green cone and third one is blue cone. Uh, so how many cones are there? Road cones are 65% cones are red cones, uh, whereas 33% cones are uh, green cones and only 2% cones are blue cones. See that, say image is formed with red plane, green plane and blue plane. And so if you basically, with these are the RGB are the primary colors for the human vision system. And uh, from the combination of RGB, we can form any kind of shades. So there are 24, uh, basically uh, 2 to 24 or 16 million color shades can be formed uh, in the digital imaging and so on. Uh, so out of see in the human vision system basically 65 percent cones are red cones 33 percent cones are green cones and only two percent cones are blue cones and i told you one interesting fact in my machine learning lecture also i think if you remember uh, that a survey was carried out um, uh, and then uh, people were asked that which color you like most okay and um, 
it was basically a very interesting uh, uh, survey which was carried out by the researcher and um, the facts came out that many people like blue color okay many many people like blue color and uh, so blue color is the most favorite color by the uh, of many people but in actual uh, the in human vision system or in a uh, retina only two percent cones are uh, blue cones whereas 33 percent cones are green cones and six, uh, 65 percent cones are uh, 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 red cones right so uh, as I told you that uh, 120 million rods are there and 6 million cones are there in the human retina and in addition to that so not only rods and um, rods and cones are there in our retina but there are basically photosensitive rods and cones there are also about 2.4 to 3 million ganglion cells are there and with only two, 1 to 2 percent of them being a photosensitive means ganglion cells are also there in addition to the uh, rods and cones in our retina and then axons of ganglion cell forms a two uh, from the two optic nerves and then photoreceptor cells are typically arranged in a irregular uh, but approximately hexagonal grid and known as a, a, a retinal mosaic. So how those photoreceptive cells are uh, arranged in our retin entire, entire retina? So it is arranged in the hexagonal shape. Now we'll see the difference. Actually, there are 11 differences between the rods and cones of human vision system. Uh, so as I told, the first difference is that rods are used for us uh, scopotopic uh, vision that is vis vision under low light condition okay so vision under low light conditions uh, okay will be uh, done by the rods or rods are responsible for capturing the images under low light condition whereas uh, cones are used for photo peak vision that is vision under high light condition okay so first difference is that rods are uh, scotopic vision and uh, cones are used for uh, photopic vision means this photopic means under high light condition uh, scotopic means under vision under low light condition so that is first difference the second difference of rods and cones is that uh, these rods are very light sensitive and sensitive to the scattered light and whereas cones are not very light sensitive, they are sensitive only to the direct light. Okay, so these are, rods are sensitive for scattered light, whereas cones are sensitive for the direct light. So that is the second difference between rods and cones. Okay, now if see somebody you might you might have heard that some people have a night blindness. Okay, when that person is, will be having a night blindness, if that person um uh, uh, is having a problem with uh, uh, his rods and uh, rods and so on so loss of rods causes a night blindness okay whereas so you might have heard that some people does not have the light uh, night blindness but some people okay they have a uh, color blindness so color blindness uh, is called as the legal blindness because uh, these people see the red color and uh, this one green color same or like that they don't get differentiation between the red color and uh, green color and that's why you might have heard that these people those people are, those who are suffering with color blindness uh, they don't get the driving license because uh, you know that uh, uh, they don't differentiate between the colors and then uh, that may create a problem or that may um, lead to the accident and so on so that's why they are not given uh, driving license those people those are suffering so this uh, color blindness is caused because of loss of cones whereas night blindness is called because of loss of rods so this is the third difference between rods and cones okay then fourth one is uh, this is a low visual acuity uh, rods is nothing but the low visual acuity whereas cones is nothing but the high visual acuity that is better spatial resolution and uh, uh, fifth one as i told you that rods are not present in the poyova region okay whereas uh, in the poyova region uh, this uh, cones are concentrated in the poyova region so most of the cones you'll find 
in the uh, Khoya region. So these are the five differences of rods and cones. The sixth difference is uh, that rods are basically uh, that gives the slow response to the light or uh, stimuli added over time, whereas cones gives the fast response to the light uh, and can pursue more rapid changes in the stimuli. So this is the sixth dif difference most basically. Rod gives the slow response to the light, whereas cones gives the fast response to the light. Okay. Seventh difference is that rods have more pigment than cones, so can detect lower light uh, levels. So in as I told you that in um, this low light conditioning also uh, we can see through the rods. So this is because uh, these rods have more pigment than cones, so it can detect lower light levels. Whereas cones have less pigment than rods and requires more light to detect the images. So. Um, uh, okay, so this is the seventh difference between the rods and cones. And the eighth difference between rods and cones is that rods is nothing but the stack of membrane enclosed uh, disc, okay, are unattached to the cell membrane directly, whereas this is the disc, uh, okay, cones are disc uh, which are attached to the outer membrane, okay. The ninth difference is that number of rods and number of cones, as I told you that number of rods in our retina are nearly 120 millions and they are distributed around the retina, entirely around the retina. Whereas number of cones in the uh, cones are about 6 millions and uh, uh, they are also distributed in the, uh, in the each retina and so on and one type this is rods is nothing but the one type of photosensitive pigment and so you will find only one type of photosensitive pigment but in case of cones there are three types of photosensitive pigments in the human as i told you that this is a red cone and a green cone or blue cone and also i told you that number of red cones are more in the uh, retina that is 65 percent cone, uh, red cones are there then 33 percent green cones are there and only two percent uh, blue cones are there so there are three types of uh, photosensitive pigments in the human cones whereas uh, there is only one type of photosensitive pigment uh, in the rod so here you will get basically a chromatic region so you will not get any color information or like that. So this rods will confer the achromatic region, whereas you will get the uh, color information through the cones. So this will confer the color region. So color for color region, cones are very, very important. Whereas for black and white or achromatic vision or grayscale region, uh, these rods are very, very important. So there, these are the 11 main differences between rods and cones of human vision system or basically retinal, uh, which okay, rods and cones are nothing but the uh, um, um, uh, photo um, cells of retina and so on. Now, this coding of visual information in the retina. So how does it work or like that? So you know that this uh, receptive field that is a portion of visual field in which the presentation of visual stimuli will produce an alternation, uh, alteration in the firing rate of a particular neurons or like that. Because so from this, you will see uh, this, uh, this will convert basically optical light into the electrical signal and then it will be communicated to the neuron and then particular neuron will get fired and so on. So you can see uh, uh, the uh, relative uh, absorbance uh, versus the wavelength and you will find that this is the wavelength of a blue cone, this is the wavelength of your green cone and this is the wavelength of your uh, this one red cone. So uh, wavelength of blue cone is less, right, around 400 nanometer. So a peak is 419 nanometer, whereas uh, wavelength of uh, uh, green cone is a peak is at 531 uh, nanometer. And uh, wavelength of red cone is higher 
uh, which is 559 nanometer and this is see that this is the wavelength of basically uh, response of um, uh, rods uh, and maximum wavelength okay uh, response you will get at the wavelength of 496 in case of rods so this rods wavelength is in between green um, blue and green uh, cones uh, whereas the lowest wavelength is of blue one, highest one is uh, uh, red one, and in between blue and red there is a green cone. So uh, this uh, cones are also called as the uh, trichromatic coding because you will get three uh, colors component like as a blue component, green component, and uh, red component. So that's why it is called as the trichromatic uh, coding and then you know that the peak wavelength sensitive for this uh, cones or uh, three cones are uh, for blue cone it is around 420 for green cone it is around 530 and for red cone it is around a 560 nanometer and so on so this is the overall wavelength uh, this relative absorbance versus wavelength uh, graph of um, this one cones and rods also uh, so I hope that you have got the uh, idea uh, this what is the wavelength of a blue cone what is the wavelength of uh, green cone and then what is the wavelength of red cone and what is the wavelength of rods so rods in, in rods there is only one uh, uh, component and uh, in case of cones there are three components one is blue component green component and uh, red component and so on so how basically image is visualized in the retina so you know that inverted image is formed on the retina so at the back side of the uh, this one image is formed and you know that this light will okay enter to the through the pupil and then it will pass through the lenses and then image will form on the retina okay so this is also there is a uh, foeva and this uh, blind spot is nothing but your optic disc and then uh, okay, in the optic uh, disc, this optic nerve will be there. These nerves are converged, and then it is connected to the brain. So in this way, basically, uh, this is the cross uh, section of the human eye, and then uh, image is inverted image is formed in the uh, on the retina. So this is all about the human vision system, and uh, uh, okay. Uh, tomorrow we'll see uh, the vision of uh, cat, uh, uh, okay, the cat, how it is different than the human, human okay, uh, vision of uh, is different uh, from the human vision system and so on. So that way tomorrow we'll uh, see that one. So today uh, we have covered this human vision system uh, and then tomorrow we'll cover uh, the remaining uh, animal and insects vision system and then we'll uh, come to the point of uh, uh, this one computer vision and so on so we'll stop here thank you very much if you have any doubt i'll be happy to answer the uh, questions okay so over to you any questions Okay, so shall we, shall we close? Thank you very much. So see you tomorrow. And uh, now I'll close the uh, presentation and also stop the recording.